to, to talk about um, what can we do better? What are we doing? Where can we get it better so that we all can be benefit to the goodness of this industry and so that um, we'll move on better? So I, I started by way of introduction saying that um, whatever we're experiencing in the printing industry now is actually a reflection of everything going on in the country. And um, it's the beginning of the year. We would have been invited to meetings where budgets are discussed, where way forward for the economy of Nigeria is discussed for the year. And um, it's not been optimistic. The economics, the financial people, the regulators, all they're talking about is that, yes, where we are is kind of better from where we were, maybe last year, but we're so far away. So thinking about the general overview, I said that we cannot isolate the in printing industry from what is happening in Nigeria. But then we shouldn't sit down and fold our hands. We should say, when other people are looking for solutions, what are the likely solutions we can also prefer so that we're not left behind when other people are moving forward? And um, this took me to think about, OK, how did we get here? And to know how we got here, we needed to know the past, the present, and where we want to be in the nearest or later future. And so I moved on to the history of printing in Nigeria. And it would interest us. I want to believe that what I will be saying may not be new to many of us here. It's just to refresh our memory so that we can all provide the solution together. Hopefully, at this meeting, or we take the narrative and you know we keep thinking about it and keep providing solutions. I started by saying that printing actually started in 1846. That is about 170 year, four years ago. And that's well before what we now know as Nigeria came to be. So printed didn't start with Nigeria. It preceded Nigeria. And of course, a missionary brought printing to Nigeria, Calabar, uh, to the then Calabar. And um, it was to print school books, missionary books, charts, you know, to promulgate the gospel at that time. And shortly thereafter, in 1859, town said uh, of the Church of Missionary Society established another press in Abel Kuta. And the interesting part for me is that he actually also started printing school at that time where he trained people in the printing uh, vocation, you know, and of course, he went further, expanding his own business. He started Iwe Iroi. That is the first Nigerian newspaper, you know, and of course, they published many books thereafter. But unfortunately, he folded in 1867 because of um, issues with the Habel Kuta people then. He couldn't continue. Then, of course, in 1862, Robert Campbell established a press. 1875, we have another press established. In 1914, the year that Nigeria got amalgamated, that what we have at Nigeria came to be, we had the first government printing house. It was established in Broad Street. And they had offices in different, in Edugu, Lagos, the North at that time. And because this industry was important to them at that stage. They actually promulgated the printing press regulation ordinance. This ordinance was meant to protect the printing business and um, to guide on every process of the business at that time. Mm -hmm. In 1910, we have other presses established by Tikacho. Um, in 1913, we have the CMS press in Lagos. 1920, we have another one, 23. 1925, we have Nigerian uh, printing and publishing, um, 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 the, the, the Nigerian Daily Times. Um, we know that the 
the Nigerian Daily Times used to be a force to reckon with in those days. I know the building at Kakawa, I don't know what has become of the building now, but it used to be a very big deal at that time, you know, and the business was booming. And for the Nigerian Daily Times, they actually, in those days, brought out very modern equipment, they really established, they, they, they made the printing business a big deal. They made a turnaround, it was like a revolution at that time, you know, and um, the, the equipment now, of course, we know they are obsolete, but in those days, it shows that the men, they were serious about the business and they equipped, they invested in it. Of course, in 1970, the letter press, you know, that was the big deal then, was abandoned for lithography and offset machines. I know that some of us here met um, the, the lithography machine. Offset machine is still, you know, in existence now. We keep updating. We keep updating. You know, I'm sure that um, Ediba, Komori, and some um, other um, um, machine companies, they keep bringing out every four years at least new technologies and other supporting companies like that. I don't want to advertise for anybody here. You know, they keep bringing supporting machines like the prepress machine, the digital and all of that. And so that's um, some development. Of course, in the late 1960s and 1970s, um, printing companies that we still know today, like the Academy Press, they were established, you know, and I'm sure academic press, uh, they had their 50 years anniversary some time ago, and things like that. So, where are we now? We're in the D high era, where, you know, where printing is easier and smoother, and you have less wastage, and, you know, um, oh, it's what it is supposed, it is meant to be for more profit, but, I wouldn't, that's debatable, you know, that are you really making profit? But where we are now is that we're in the latest technology, the D high, and I'm sure maybe in another few years we'll be having developed the technology than what we have here. Now, what are those factors that influence the development of the printing industry? There must have been a need that needed to be filled, and that's why printing, you know, came into existence. And for Nigeria, it included the proliferation of missionary activities in Nigeria. You know, they needed to print Bibles, they needed to print charts, and I can imagine then there was no plane. The, the um, sea transportation then would take forever. So it was easier for them to bring the equipment down so that it's easier for them to be able to produce the materials they needed at that time. Then, like we said in the history, in Habel Kuta, there was a newspaper company, Iwe Iroi. So news was spread, dissemination of information, communication, and it brought about development in the printing industry. Because we know that Every printing company, sorry, every media company in Nigeria, they, 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 they need printers. Some of them have their home printing facilities. Yes, we have different technologies. We have what suits the newspaper more than the commercial printing, but the fact remains that they are all printing. Then, of course, the development, the involvement over the years is as a result of quest for high quality printing. You know, um, when the, uh, um, what do you call, the letter press was no longer, um, the quality was no longer satisfactory. They brought about the lithography, the, the offset printing, and now we have the dehyde printing. Apart from volume, apart from need, we also, uh, quality was, um, a need then that brought about development of the printing industry. And of course, the colonial government. I, I kept thinking that, so if we did not have, if the colonial government did not come there, you know, to colonize Nigeria, 
Does that mean there would not be anything like printing in Nigeria? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't have been that early. Maybe it should have been up pre, uh, post-1914. But at least it was as a result of the colonialism that we have printing industry. Also, um, in a capitalist economy, businessmen want to invest in what they think is a thriving business, in what they think will be profitable or will meet needs. And so the participation of business people, investors, organizations, uh, multinationals, corporations, and all that in printing, you know, also made the development possible. Some of us here are not the owners of our company. We are managing the company for other people. These people may be business people that think this is a lucrative business or this is a business they want to invest into and they invested. Some of them are just investing in printing. Some of them are investing in other industries. So this also brought about the development of printing because we know that printing is highly capital intensive. And so investors are needed, maybe one, maybe two, to be able to buy some of these machines sometimes. Mm -hmm. We will still get there at the, when we are preferring solution. Then, of course, technology advancement, among others, also led to the development of printing. You know, it's interesting. We all are, you know, here, we have, we have expertise in printing. And, you know, it's so, it could be so absorbing, you know, there is always something better to have. There is always something better to do. Um, color, um, color resolutions, and all of that, you know. So all these um, interests, you know, brought about development in printing. Now, enough of the story. I'm sure I'm not telling you what you did not know. But we needed to take ourselves back there. Where are we now? And I said, considering the long history of printing business in Nigeria, it should logically be expected that the business should be competing favorably in international markets and be a key revenue generation for government at all levels. Unfortunately, this has not been so. And um, what are the reasons? We have many reasons. Please feel free when I finish reading out my own to suggest we are in a meeting. So the, the more knowledge we share, the better. I have a lack of necessary infra infrastructure. Power and transportation are at the forefront. We have roads, we have uh, you know, our ports, uh, troubles associated with ports, bringing in goods, the roads, the power. The power is very close to us. A lot of us run our machines with generators, and you know the cost associated with that. So these and many others that you know better than I. Then we have huge reliance on importation and foreign exchange, resulting in lack of control over production and materials. If whatever is happening in UK now, Brexit issue, would affect foreign exchange, it translates to the cost of bringing in paper. It translates to cost of buying paper and ink and other chemicals. It, cost, it translates to the quotation you give to your clients. You know? So it is so close to us that this bureaucracy you know, in, with importation and all of that affects us directly. You can't really plan. You know? Sometimes when you have a one year, two years contract, with your clients, you have a clause subject to foreign exchange. Am I correct? You know, so that means we don't have much control over this business. Then, of course, we have unfavorable foreign competition. We're competing with India, with China, with Malaysia, with um, European countries, with, you know, everybody. And the competition is not favorable. They have light. They have the technology, they have the government support that we don't have. And yet, we're expected to compete in a global market with them. Because whether we like it or not, we are not providing, 
your business to Nigeria alone. It's a global business. They have free entry into your market. You are supposed to have free entry into their market. But can we compete favorably? No. Then we have high cost of machines, parts, and maintenance. It's um, printing machines, you know, even the lowest of them, they come in multi-million naira. And um, <laughs> except if you have direct contracts, maybe from some big government or some big corporations, you may not be able to afford uh, um, 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 modern technologies. We'll still get there. Then, of course, lack of technical personnel to manage and maintain machines. Some people, they rather they spoil your machines instead of you tell them to solve one problem. They hand come back with 12 problems. You know, so these are attendant. So even when you want to buy machines, you are thinking of maintenance before you think of the money. You know, these are problems. This is where we are in the printing industry today. Then, of course, poor marketing and sales. Big C's and myself were just talking um, a few minutes ago. Sorry, I want to do a memo on you. Yeah. You know, and she was saying that um, it's inadequate um, marketing and sales um, pitch pitches. You know, we've all introduced ourselves, and I guess maybe she wasn't so impressed with some pitches. And she said we needed to do training, which is true. Ongoing trainings. What you know yesterday is absolute, is obsolete today. So we need ongoing training. We need marketers and salespeople, you know, that would be on top of their game and bring this business in and leave the rest of the production people to prove the worth of the company. Then lack of investment, both local and, and um, foreign direct investment. We know that it is not easy now to even get loans from the bank. And for investors, all they are thinking about is the profit and how their money would turn over positively. But when you are in an industry where you are not sure of the returns, it's so difficult to get investors to invest in this industry. But hopefully, we'll provide solution to that before we leave this meeting. Then, of course, insuffic insufficient printing education. Remember, in Abel Kusa, we had a printing school. What happened to them? I know we have, um, in the colleges of education, we have the printing departments. But do they have the equipment to teach these people? How many of your companies have they come to say, oh, I'm from Yabatech, I want to have, I want to do internship on printing in your company? So sometimes I just wonder, what are we teaching? What are we learning? You know, a lot of us here learned on the job. A lot of us went abroad. We went to Germany, we went to UK, we went to South Africa there to learn whatever we're doing on printing or printing management. And you know what they do? They give us, they, they feed us with their laws. They feed us with their procedures. So they, we are detached from reality. You know, I was opportune to be in a training in South Africa. And they were talking, and I said, no, this is not obtainable in Nigeria. You're telling us what is obtainable in South Africa. But when we come here, we, it can't work because we, we cannot use the law of South Africa to practice in Nigeria. When we have our laws, we even have very robust laws. So that is some of the problems we're having today in the printing industry. Then, of course, regulatory and compliance bureaucracy. Ease of doing business, you have double taxation. You pay to this, you pay to this. Everybody is taxing you. Factories, people from the federal, they come. From the local, they come. From the uh, um, state, they, you know. All of this, you know, sometimes you just want to, you just wake up in the morning, you just want to go back to bed. Because all these troubles, can we survive, you know? That's where, from my own um, um, perspective, from where I sit, these are the problems that we are facing. Maybe there are more that I didn't remember to put, or please feel free to jot them down and let's talk about them at the end of this presentation. I researched into um, three countries' model the Indian model, the Malaysian model, and the Chinese model. Now, for the Indian model, 
their economy was liberalized so that there is what you call free economy freedom to participate you know in trade in the economy and this and of course privatization was initiated and this had, had helped to integrate the indian economy you know and so the indian economy is in tune with the global economy they're able to trade to do business with anybody without any impediments you know from their government and of course they operate with modern state state of the heart technology i want to believe that some of us um, what we call new machines in our companies are 1970 something when indian is bringing in 2020 january model of machines already so there is no way you can churn out the same quality so your quality is relative what you call quality is different from a modern technology quality so and your quality might not be your client's state of quality especially if they've tried such you know technologies and they are happy with what they got from them okay the malaysia model this is more interesting because um you know that the nigerian government orders print from malaysia i i, I believe everybody knows that right you know and why is this so the malaysia printing and graphic arts industry they've registered remarkable growth especially in the last decade you see I, I, let me just quickly say indian malaysia okay china has been successful in printing for a long time but india and malaysia it took positive steps by their government you know to make things work it wasn't like this their development um is pretty uh, or relatively of um not so long maybe like two decades three decades it's not been forever like that in malaysia uh, maybe in the last 20 years they've achieved or you know coming from the last 20 years they've achieved or less they've achieved what they're achieving now and of course the government of Malaysia, in its effort to promote new investment and encourage expansion and modernization, they granted attractive incentives and to the government, I'm sorry, to the industry. They give tax uh, um, reliefs to them. There are some machines that are not taxable to encourage uh, sorry. Sorry. tax holiday, you know, just to encourage the industry to move forward. And the printing industry in Malaysia is one of the 10 industries that is booming the Malaysia economy, you know? And of course, they, like I said before, we get print from, they get print from countries like Nigeria. So that means that government is actively promoting the export of printing services. We are still struggling begging people not to take their prints abroad. But can you think about merging with other people so that you can have better equipment, you know? Can you think about how you can bring bigger investors, you know, when you have the machines, when you have what it takes? I can talk about my company. We strive to be ahead of technology. We strive to be modern. But what it translates to is that we are competing, you know, with everybody. When we bid for jobs, everybody bids for jobs. You know, at that rate, everybody promises quality. It is when you get the outcome that you know that maybe one quality is better than the other. But can we come together? We are all together in this room because we have the same problem. Can we all come together to pull resources to get better equipment? You know, can we have some kind of like a hub of printing equipment, you know, where everybody has a stake in and so and where we all have outputs, you know, that will benefit everybody. It's a suggestion. We don't know how practical it could be, but can we consider it and see whether it's the way forward? Can we begin to start 
planting uh, um, um, paper trees, you know, so that in 10, 20 years, you would have said that, see what my investment or see what my involvement has developed. That is it in terms of paper. But today, when we have paper and um, books coming in from India at zero uh, duty, you know, which is right because we signed the Florence Treaty, I think in 1950, where it says that books, educational, and things like that will come in free, you know, to different company, countries as zero duty. So the government has not, is, is not wicked to have allowed those in. If we have the opportunity also to export, it will go at duty free. But can we create, can they create favorable, you know, competition by saying, okay, all those things that they bring in as well. Because it is not that you have them in your country and you are not using them, you decide to import them. Can paper that we're bringing in now be little or zero duty? Can chemicals be, they said some chemicals have higher duty rates because of the danger status. Can they come in lower? You know, they should think more about growing the business so that when we are planning on the long-term solution, we are able to bring, see, Publishers may not be favorably disposed to printing their books in Nigeria because they are businessmen, you know, because the amount they bring it in is much lesser than what we'll give them. Even the paper price itself, by the time you translate it to the books, it's higher. You have ink, you have, your, you have a lot of things, you know, so can the government Advocacy, this is where Princess comes in with LCCI, you know. Can we, can we beg them, talk to them, educate them about the printing business? Because I'm sure if they really know what, it, the, what the production process is about, they would be more, beg who? you know. Eh? Beg who, sorry to you. I mean, government, okay, maybe I'm government. using the word beg, you know. The government, you know, educate them. Tell them that this and this and these are the processes of printing. And because of this, this duty, this process, light and all of that, we are not able to compete favorably with our international counterparts. So can you help us review your duties so that the burden on us will be less? You know, so government has its own to do. We have our own to do. Then, now looking inwards, what about our own orientation? Because when, for people, the topic says Nigeria first. So we should think about Nigeria first. But do we have what it takes? Mm -hmm. Are we transparent enough? Are we sincere, you know, in, with the business? What about our quality drive? I know that you export our print to Nigeria and to other countries. Let's start praying. And of course, they also support their printing entrepreneurs by helping them to acquire latest printing technology and state-of-the-art machineries. And the environment, the, the business environment is friendly, you know, not hostile. It's easy for them to get loans, to get things, and of course their infrastructures are fantastic. So they don't have problem with churning out good products that people can buy into. And uh, we've talked about um, incentives then. Their paper industry is um, it's so developed that it's one of the best around, you know, and they have about 90% self-sufficient they can use and Exports, you know, it's eating and takeaway or something like that, is what they have now in Malaysia. Yes, we have the China model as well. And um, the printing sector in China has been on for a very long time. And it keeps improving. 
you know, and when you want to compare, you compare prints from China, from Malaysia, from India, sometimes Europe, um, United Kingdom, and other places. That's, um, in my own view, those are the models we hope Nigeria will get to. You can give other examples if you have. But I look forward to a nearest future where we shall operate like Malaysia, where paper would be so, you know, um, easy to get and will be internally, you know, produced so that we can do a way, at least we can, you see, we have to, the fact is that there would always be importation of printing materials. Because a lot of them, as at now, are not available. Where are our chemists? Where are the phys physicists or what, you know, the people that studied physics, the chemists, can they begin to now research and begin to work on bringing out chemicals that we can use, you know? Can we have um, research areas, you know, to develop printing consumables, you know, can we start to plant trees, you know, so that, by the way, trees for doing, um, for printing, for, for printing uh, papers, they have between 10 and 20 years growth and development and um, season. And apart from that, you need the equipment to turn them to papers, you need the factories and all that. So that is a long-term solution we need to look at. But what is the immediate you know, uh, relief we can get? Because in 10, 20 years, some people would have retired, some people would have moved on to other businesses, but we need to start today. You know, and how can we get there? I'll still read this, but I'm, 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 you know, how can we get there? You see, government cannot do everything for us. They need, we need the enabling environment to operate as business. It is the, go it is the business of government to provide that enabling environment for us. And we, have, we need advocacy to demand those from us. But the government has so many troubles. Can we start thinking of how to come together and start planting our trees? This advocacy, this shout, are we prepared? It's a question for us in this room and to take out to other people. Then, um, develop realistic and easy short-term, medium-term, and long-term solution strategies to solve existing and emerging problems. The paper um, plantation is an example. So many other ones. And, the laboratory development, you know, chemists, let them begin to develop. We, we, I'm not sure. Even the company that mixes ink, you know, would only mix on specification. We import even inks. So why do we have universities churning out chemists, you know, and they're saying they're not getting jobs? Can we get them to do something for us? Then um, develop business models that is well suitable for Nigerian condition. You see, we, we like giving examples. I've given Chinese, Malaysia, and India examples. Are we in the same position? If we were where they were then, then we can begin to work. But you cannot jump to be Malaysia today. It took them time. So let us be realistic in our examples and in our projections. Then, of course, sincerity and prudence in pursuing common interest. Congratulations for Thank doing you. this. <laughs> you. This, you know, common interest we're pursuing here. Then, the bitter truth is that printing companies need to do proper house cleaning and either get better, either get better or get left behind. Technology is moving fast. We need to move at the pace of technology. Then, um, then, of course, we've talked about margin. Can we merge, you know, and collaborate so that we can have better equipment to compete favorably? Then, um, in conclusion, I said that we need to challenge our way of thinking, decision making, sentiments, and facing challenges for future 
and continuous growth. Okay. After um, that I work for, we came up with a campaign that we call, and that's part of what um, brought about the topic Nigeria first. My MD is British. He saw the passion with which Nigerians, you know, followed the football and supported football. And at that stage, it didn't matter your tribe, it didn't matter where you come from, it didn't matter your religion, it didn't matter your sentiment. Everybody just faced, it was Nigeria first, and every other person second. And you know, and we, we put us together and we came up with that campaign. We shared the, the, we, we shared the uh, football fixtures and we distributed them around. And another thing, you know, Trump, you can say anything about him, but you cannot take away from him the fact that he's taking America, America first. first, you know? So just like in football, when we shelve all other interests and put Nigeria interests first, can the government, can the practitioners in this industry, can the friends of this industry, you know, put Nigeria first when it comes to printing too? When you need to print your invitation, can you look for a local printer, for heaven's sake? We are not that bad. You don't have to take everything abroad. And when they now disappoint you and your daughter's wedding is two days' time, you are now rushing and saying, please, I want an invitation. I want brochure. I mean, why didn't you? So we were good for the rush period. You know, if we're good for rush period and for delivery and all of that, can we all think of Nigeria for this is the campaign I want us to take out of this place and say, Nigeria, Nigeria first. In printing, in manufacturing, it, like I said, it's a general problem, but we are narrowing to printing. So I say, let us look inward, let us think inward, let us make Nigerian force so that the printing industry in the nearest future, we can be proud to say, I am a part of it, of this industry. Thank you. Thank you.